Hey everybody, Kelly here, and I'm going to give you a quick overview and unboxing a test flight with the Blade 200 QX. Now, this uh, is a brand new product from Blade. It's supposed to be brushless motors, uh, very small form factor, and I got it. I have a Phantom 2, which I like to fly a lot, but it, you know, it involves uh, has a gimbal on it, and <coughs> it's just a lot bigger and not as portable and easy to take out. Um, so I decided to give this a shot just for playing around um, in the backyard and letting my son learn, etc. It's uh, got safe mode built in, so it should be pretty easy to fly straight out of the box. Um, I also understand it has an agile mode, so you can play uh, play stunts and stuff with it, do flips and all that. And then uh, it's supposed to have cool LED lights for flying at night, which is also a cool thing. And um, the last thing is it binds with my radio that I already have. I have a couple of Spectrum radios. This is the DX5, my oldest, old trusty one here, the simplest to use, so I thought I'd give it a try with this. Um, I'm also, uh, don't tune out, because I am going to show you how to bind it correctly and how to actually get the prop spinning. The directions in this box are wrong. I found out from the hobby store and from several people I've talked to online that um, if you follow the directions here, you will be frustrated because the motors won't spin up. So I'm going to show you how you do that and um, hopefully a lot of people will see this video and understand that uh, at least the directions in the initial runs of this, and this has only been out a couple weeks, are wrong. So if you follow them, you're not going to be able to spin up the motors. So let's start by opening it up and checking it out. Um, as, you can, as you can see, it was 229 I bought it at Hobby Town. Um, I think that's about what it was going for online for the bind and fly version, so I figured I'd just get it at my local hobby shop. But you can order it on Amazon as well or someplace else. Uh, comes with some wrenches, some screws, directions. Um, I've actually already opened it and looked at a lot of this stuff, so uh, I'm not seeing this for the first time. I believe this is something about the transmitter setup. Um, uh, maybe this explains mode setup. Well, this says there are incorrect things in the manual, but it doesn't address the takeoff, the, the spinning up the props issue. So um, just real quick on that, on right here on takeoff, it says, when you prepare to take off, move both sticks into the bottom inside corners, then back to center, increase the throttle until the model is two feet off the ground. So that would be doing this, which is what you do with the Phantom. With the, I know you do this with the DJI Phantom. I'm not sure what other uh, copters do this, but that does not work. That won't spin up the props. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. So first of all, let's pull off the top here. It is a cool little package, tiny package. This is much smaller than I was expecting. And here it is. Comes all wrapped in foam. Looks like we've got to put the landing gear on. And uh, I actually have already charged the battery, so that's good, but it does come with the battery charger. It is a 2... 2S, 2-cell, 7.4-volt, 800-milliamp LiPo battery. Um, I did order uh, a couple of extras of these on Amazon. This was the only one they had at the hobby shop. So I think they're about 20 bucks a piece on Amazon. So I got a few more just so I can have more flying time. They say you get about five or six minutes of flying time with this. But this is pretty much charged. The only thing I've used it for was to test and make sure I knew how to actually start the thing. So I won't get the charger out. Spare props, I won't go th those out, but I will get this out. This is important because this is a little um, uh, adapter you actually have to put on the charger. You have to put it in right here in order to make the charger work. Uh, otherwise, I think it goes in like this. Yeah, so this end goes on the battery. Uh, the battery will not charge plug directly into this thing. So just so you know, in case you're trying to figure out why you can't plug the battery into the charger directly, you have to have this little adapter cable, which does come with it. So let's go ahead and put the landing gear on it real quick. Flip it over. Comes with an Allen key and it also comes with a prop wrench. This is for, I believe, I, actually I think this is for these little guys here in case you wanted to take the motors off, um, in case you had a motor fail or something. Um, props have these little tiny things. I haven't figured out how to take the props off yet, but we'll get to that later. Um, for now, let's get it in the air and see what we can do. I haven't actually had a chance to really fly it yet, so I'm kind of excited. So each, whoops, careful with these, uh, two little Allen keys. These guys, landing skids go in these two slots. Obviously, you want to make sure that they're back toward the center so that you have 
you know, a little bit of coverage here so it, it's basically centered and balanced on these two landing skids. Put these guys in. There are two Allen keys. One of them is bigger than the other. The bigger one is the one you use for the landing skids. The smaller one is for these little guys here. And I'm not sure why you would want to take those off again, unless you were doing repairs, perhaps. Um, hopefully it won't come to that, or maybe you're modifying it. But like I said, I've only had it for a little while, so I'm not ready for any of that yet. I just want to fly. So let me go ahead and screw these things in. Uh, take them around and around and around. It feels like they're just kind of seating in the plastic down there. They feel pretty solid. Keep going until they. I definitely wouldn't use an electric device uh, for this. I would, even though it's a bit of a pain, I would use this manual um, Allen key just so you don't over tighten them. Okay, everything's assembled. Got the landing gear on. Uh, I took off the door to the bottom here. Um, this battery will go in it, and this is the bleed. Obviously, the red one, not the. Um, not the balancing lead here. That's for charging. A um, couple things. I know that with your Phantom and several other um, quadcopters, you should always have the radio on first. I believe that with this device, um, I think you actually want to plug it in first and then leave the radio off and then uh, turn the radio on in bind mode after five seconds. So you'll watch it go through this little light up sequence and then this blue blinking light means it's in bind mode. Also, you want to make sure this is on a flat level surface um, while it's initiating everything. If it's off kilter, just like any other quad, you'll get off kilter flight because it thinks that uh, level is not level. So you want it on a level flat surface standing still. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my radio to bind mode, turn it on, wait a few seconds. You can see the lights blinking here and there, now it sounds like it's beeped, so I'm going to let go. And that green light indicates that it is bound. Now the green light, I believe, is stability mode uh, with low agility, meaning um, you can't flip it very fast, it won't fly as aggressive. The red light, this one here, is agility mode. So if you want to fly it more aggressively, I'm just flipping this little uh, trainer switch over here, up and down, and that turns it from one to the other. I believe there's also a couple of other uh, modes, low and high, um, that change the light. I'm not sure how to do those right now, but um, I'm sure you can figure it out in the manual. Let's get it up in the air. So it's bound. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, battery in. One thing they've done fairly nicely with this is giving you enough room for the battery and all the cables. Uh, I'm to try to be careful not to pinch them in unnatural ways, although you almost kind of have to sometimes to get them in there. So that's all sitting in there pretty nicely. I'm going to put this guy on and close it up. One uh, mod that I did to my Phantom that I might do to this is just put a little piece of Velcro right here so that it stays closed to make sure it doesn't come open. So now here is, <coughs> I believe that the red is the front and the green is the back. Not 100% yet, but we'll find out in a moment. Uh, here is the thing that is perplexing about this thing, about this uh, bird and the directions. As I said, the directions say you are supposed to do what you do with Phantom. You pull the sticks down and in in order to initiate the props. Well, obviously that does nothing. Can't take it up and down. That does nothing. There, there's, no, there's no motion here. So what you have to do, and I just learned this today, is actually push this thing up five times, the trim, one, two, three, four, five, and then go back, forth, back, forth. And there's your, there's your prop spinning. Now, to kill the props, you take the trim and go down five times. One, two, three, four, five. Kills the props. A little awkward. Um, my other radio actually has a throttle kill button. I'm curious to see if that works, but for this radio, it's the trim. So again, now, now I don't know if I actually need to do the five times up again, but let me try it. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Nope. So one, two, three, four, five, left, right, left, right. Yep, there you go. And there it goes. So, let's see. 
Let's see if I can trim it out a little bit. It's a bit breezy here today in Texas. Uh, seems to want to go forward. So it is, is it, a, it is in a pretty stable mode. Like it, I'm, I'm pushing the sticks all the way back, front, left, right, and you can see it's not super aggressive. Giving a, man, it's got a lot of power, jeez. Wow, I just uh, hit the throttle about three quarters and it really took off. Um, it's a little, little jumpy, you know. It's, uh, it's feeling like, it's feeling like the wind is pushing it around a little bit. Um, let's check out the yaw here. Yeah, okay, that's that's full yaw and reverse. And again, pretty uh, pretty tame. I mean, I'm I'm whoa, pushing the sticks in all sorts of directions, and it's just barely tipping over. So great trainer, great way to learn. Now I'm gonna take it in, take it low, let it hover a little bit, get it lined up so I'm ready, and flip it into expert mode. Whoa! And wow. <laughs> and obviously, <laughs> It did not like that. <laughs> All right, word of the wise. Expert mode is to be uh, respected. All right, I'm gonna take out the battery one more time. Radio's off. Unplug. Wait just a second. Plug back in. Turn it on. Bind it. Okay. Green light's on. I think it should mean it's bound. So go ahead and put the battery in. Put the cover on. And by the way, that's the uh, connector for the camera. I don't think I'd ever use this for video, but we'll see. All right, so now I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna try left, right, left, right first. Okay, it doesn't like that. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Left, right, left, right. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it into expert. Wow, okay, it doesn't even stabilize itself in expert. You have to be you have to stay on top of it in this mode. Flip, be ready to flip it back at a moment's notice. Because, uh, boy, it is, it is one angry bee in expert mode. Show you one more time. I'm going to bring it back over here. I'm going to see if I can find the um, high response stability or safe mode. Okay, I'm going to flip it back to expert and I'm going to move it forward just a little bit. You can see it just does not, does not self-stabilize in expert mode. It just stays wherever you put it. So if you tip it left a little bit, it stays left. So again, just be extra careful lest you do what I just did. And then be ready to flip it back into safe if you need to. It does have some nice LEDs. Anxious to see what those guys look like at night. It's small, it's quiet. Hoping uh, these little quirks with the uh, binding and powering up are <coughs> temporary. So let's see if we can land it and turn it off. Let's try and put it over here in this bird bath. We can put it down gently in the bird bath. Oh, pressure's on. Uh, there's a lot of wind now. Okay. I'm gonna put it down gently in the grass because of the wind. Now I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Ah, geez. So, unless you can land it perfectly, if it's gonna tip over, you're gonna have that issue. Um, what you might wanna do is catch it. See if you can catch it, and then see if you can do the one, two, three, four, five. All right, I'll turn the radio off. It does not like it when you do that to it. Pull this out one more time. Let it 
this it. Put it back in. Give it a second. Okay, go ahead and bind it. Okay. Didn't seem to take that time. Turn this off. Turn it on. In binding mode. Okay, it did take that time. I don't know. That's just a little quirky. All right, gonna try one more thing. <coughs> Put this guy in, and I'm going to see if <coughs> instead of landing it, I can catch it and uh, then kill the radio, or maybe try landing it on the concrete. Although I don't like what that could do to the props if I mess up, but. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. One, two, three, four, five. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Huh. All right, gonna take it all the way down. Kill a mosquito. Kill another mosquito. All right. Uh, okay. One, one, two, three, four, five. Left, right, left, right. Maybe I have to go up to a certain So you have to take it up until it beeps like that almost. Okay, taking it back out. <clears throat> now if I was going to try and hand land it, I would just grab it like this, turn the throttle down and go one, two, three, four, five, and that kills it. Not super practical, quite honestly, not a big fan of that. Uh, I wish there was a quicker way to kill the props with the sticks or something, but let's one, two, three, four, five. Left, right, left, right. Okay, I'm gonna try one more thing on my radio. I've got a low and re a high rate. Okay, that does seem to make a little difference. That's the high rate, which gives you a little more, I think a little more, that's low rate. Uh, low rate seems to be a little slower. I'm trying to tell if it's actually a real difference or if I'm just imagining it. But man, look at the power on that. I just give it some gas and up it goes. Like I said, there's a fair amount of wind tonight, so it's you know it's a tiny little thing fighting that wind. I think it's going to be a fun trainer. Uh, I'm going to have to get used to this whole uh, throttle up, throttle down thing, and just how I'm going to land it each time without tipping it into the grass because. Let me try again over here where the grass is a little shorter. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, that worked a little better. So just don't land it in uneven tall grass and you'll be okay. One, two, three, four, five. Left, right, left, right. Pretty fun. Very fun little toy. Looking forward to using it to get better and better at, at flying and uh, hopefully be able to get better with my Phantom. Now, check it out. So those blinking lights, I think, mean that the battery's reached a certain voltage and is getting low, which is understandable. I think you can continue to fly for a little bit on this, and then at some point it's gonna just have low voltage and it's just gonna land itself. So, Take it up one more time, just for fun. Let it come down. Do a little, little spin with the yaw. Bring it back over. All right, see if we can get another successful landing out of it, and then we'll call it a day. So I can charge the battery. I'll try it at night and see how it does. And one thing too, you can't see that battery light from below. So obviously, I think the outside lights begin to, oh, it's going down on its own now. I think the ins outside lights begin to blink when the battery's getting low, so just be aware of that. So, one, two, three, four, five. So there you go, the Blade 200QX. A lot of potential. Um, I hope Blade can address this issue with how you 
go about starting and stopping it because I think it's a little clunky with the five flips of the trim switch, uh, the throttle trim switch. But at least now you know, and uh, if you're out there trying it, uh, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.